What is a successful 2024 election for Action SA? Is to emerge as the biggest political party in the country. Okay. Uh, is that realistic? That's what we are. In 2020. Well, uh, what is realistic in life? Uh, uh, what is realistic in Dare life? Dare to dream. It, it, it's, okay. It's, it's, it's what you, you, you aim to achieve. Okay. Uh, we, what would you be satisfied with? I'll be personally devastated if you get anything under 15%. I'll Nationally? Be devast- national. Okay. I'll be devastated. Okay. Right. Okay. Would you ever, if the NC drop below 50%, accept being the minority in the coalition of rulership? Well, look, I think uh, that decision is not made by me. Uh, if, if, if I was the one to decide, uh, uh, I would ask South Africans to give us a 60% uh, majority so that we can implement our policies and okay. save this country and fix it. Uh, okay. But ultimately, the voters are the ones who are going mm. to decide. And, uh, but I'm if a the democracy hit 45 and they came to you and said, would you like to be... The, the no, tip over the no, no. you'd say no. Okay. That's, that's out of the question. Herman Mashaba is the biggest new political force in South Africa in literally a decade since the start of the economic freedom fighters. He had an amazing, extraordinarily impressive first local government election. On debut, his party Action SA took more than one fifth, 22% in the end of the vote in Gauteng. And when he sat down with us for an exclusive interview, he said some pretty shocking, unusual things that you're about to hear. Firstly, that he would instantly jail both Zuma and Ramaphosa. Secondly, that he would do away with, scrap any and all parole for long-term criminals who had committed serious crimes. Thirdly, that he would force them to work whether they wanted to or not in a way that honestly to me sounded very indentured labor slavery-ish. Fourthly, that he would scrap minimum wage in its entirety in South Africa and disempower unions. And fifthly, that he would be massively devastated, disappointed, if his party didn't get 15% of the national vote in 2024. Now, if they do get 15%, that will almost certainly be the most impressive national government debut for a new political party in history but he'll be devastated if he doesn't get it. So, this is the issue with Herman Mashaba. These are your options, would you like one? I think I, I like this one. Action is it's, 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 no, And, and uh, I like this concept of Innovation. being stuck in, uh, <laughs> in the darkness. In, in this country with this load shading, okay. you can never really trust at night. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I'm, I'm glad to also Ooh. give you to an action one, essay. Action one. Oh, what am I gonna do with this? Yeah. But I can't put it on. I'm okay. sure you understand. Well, uh, uh, well, I understand, but I don't understand. Why do so many South Africans think that you're a xenophobe? Is it a, a lot? I don't think so. I would, then I, would, I don't think I would agree with you. There's some or with... Um, I didn't say uh, majority or, with, or minority. Uh, well, with uh, ulterior agendas. You can, uh, you can understand my entry into politics has disrupted... Um, Mm. Uh, the normal political uh, s- space. So I'm not liked uh, by traditional politicians because uh, I'm not in this business to make friends uh, with them. So that's why uh, remember when I raised this matter of uh, uh, illegal foreigners in the country, uh, ANC and others uh, went to, to an extent of even reporting me to the South African Human Rights Commission. And when they investigated only to find uh, that everything uh, articulated it's contained in our in in our in our constitution this country south africa was built at the back of migrants and we must continue attracting people of the world to come to this rainbow nation mm. that uh, the desmond just uh, spoke about but mm. they must come here legally and when mm. they're here they must respect our laws of course if anyone calls that xenophobic then mm. the authors of our constitution we a xenophobic group of uh, lawyers who put together this constitution because that's what it says. And it's not only South Africa. Every single country in the world uh, articulates the same thing. So that means the world is, the, all of us, the constitutions and the laws of countries all over the world are xenophobic. The best I can tell is that, uh, so you did a much publicized citizen's arrest uh, as your first citizen's arrest as DMA. You arrested someone who was walking down the street in WCBD with a cow's head and then you 
you tweeted something on the lines of, I don't want you, uh, your kinds of people coming here, bringing Ebola. And then just after that, um, you tweeted kind of like crime stats of what uh, different foreign nationalities in South Africa, the kinds of crimes they commit. And while um, established bodies didn't find that that was fundamentally xenophobic, I think the best argument uh, against you from a variety of NGOs was like, it was a wink and a nudge towards xenophobia because it was misleading, because it didn't contextualize it with um, the fact that uh, firstly, many of those arrests were for like minor misdemeanors and they're no good crimes but like minor misdemeanors like drunk driving for example and also within the context of the fact maybe that 95% or more of crimes in South Africa are committed by South Africans and then after that it was weird and I'm not saying that you were a part of this there's no evidence that you were I don't believe that you were but all of these deeply xenophobic Twitter accounts started championing you and they don't anymore in fact now they say that you're a sellout because you had tea with John Stenhazen so I'm not saying that that was a <laughs> rational group of people but but you became this emblem of uh, xenophobia on Twitter, which was kind of extraordinary. What was it like? Yeah, well, the thing is, you must understand uh, this uh, campaign was launched by people uh, who uh, I was a threat against. You remember okay. at the time um, I was uh, really pushing out, uh, exposing corruption mainly by ANC senior people. Uh, mm -hmm. In the three years as the mayor of the city of Johannesburg uncovered 34 billion rands worth of fraud and corruption by senior ANC people. So you can imagine mm -hmm. they, they had to do something. They couldn't just sit back and uh, and, and let me survive. And uh, lucky they found uh, a friend in the DA um, to, to remove me because uh, okay. obviously from the ANC, uh, they realized, my goodness, if we don't stop this mashaba, we're going to be arrested. We're going to land in jail. And this man is not kind to criminals. Okay. And uh, the DA said, um, I mean, EFF may uh, um, by providing services in poor communities and uh, that's uh, that's it. I th you think, yeah, Herman Mashaba is not going to keep quiet under no circumstances. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to apologize to anyone. South Africa is a sovereign state, mm -hmm. and at the same time, like I've done over the years, I will protect. And if you look at my statements, so that's what uh, 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 the South African Human Rights Commission found uh, uh, on my side. I was actually fighting for the rights of uh, this undocumented foreign nationals being abused. Are you okay. aware of the, the level of human trafficking happening yes, in this country? Yes, and exploitation. It's terrible. Yeah, no. It's terrible. And uh, the poor people, uh, because they're here in South Africa illegally, mm. see, this criminal yes. uh, elements makes them they really very vulnerable. I can tell you, that, let yeah. me give you a case uh, that once, once broke my heart and I got really very angry with the so-called human rights lawyers and NGOs. We were doing uh, a raid in one of the buildings I was told about, and I decided I must accompany the police. As we go in, it was four or five in the afternoon, as we go in, in this dark, sm the, the smell and, uh, you know, human beings cannot be... Uh, live that uh, way. You know, yeah. live this way, you know. And um, then someone uh, says to me, he says, Mr. Mashaba, please come and help. There's a lady just about to deliver. Okay. So they take me through this dingy, mm. dark room. So we use torches. Yes, the lady just about to give uh, mm. uh, uh, the bed and uh, ask you how come during a raid you, you're not yeah during the raid how come you're not going to hospital? Right. Says, no, I'm, I'm undocumented. I'm undocumented. So what do you think? They was there and they called uh, the, the ambulance. We made sure that yeah. this woman. Uh, to, to go, to go, uh, must go to hospital and get uh, proper treatment. So what is so, the solution? And, and, uh, and uh, that's what I, I don't understand about the, yeah. the so-called human rights uh, lawyers. Okay. Well, in cases like this, where are they? So in the case of the woman about to give birth, uh, who is undocumented, undocumented, after she's had her child, what is the solution? Does she get deported? Yeah, well, uh, no. Uh, uh, we, we have the uh, Department of uh, Home Affairs must do their work. Okay. Because every person who's in this country must be documented so that we understand why people are here. If they're in South Africa for, for good reasons and they're qualified to get the documentation, they must be documented. Okay. If I they understand. came to South Africa illegally and they're involved in illegal activity, Catching we must answers. send them back to their country. I understand. That, uh, that's, uh, okay. that's my view and that's a okay. view of our party. For all South Africans, crime is horrific. It's so unsafe, like all over South Africa. How do you fix SAPS, the South African Police Service? 
Well, as I've indicated to you, the Minister of Police must be uh, uh, someone uh, with uh, police experience. But uh, there's so much corruption poli- and competence. Yeah, no, uh, let yeah. me t- t- tell you how we intend dealing with, uh, with, uh, with criminality in South Africa. Okay. What we do with criminals, if you are sentenced to life imprisonment, it's going to be life imprisonment. And no you're parole. Going to, okay. No parole. Okay. And you're going to pay back to society. You're not going Monday to Friday at the list. You're not going to be in your cells. You're Eight working. o'clock until five o'clock. Labor. You're gonna be working somewhere. Okay. Where we will determine. Paid on or the unpaid. Unpaid. Paid for what? You've uh, you've harmed society. Pay you for what? You are sure. paying back to society for for. But that does sound a little bit like slavery, is it not? Then tell me, do you think uh, you, you must kill the, my sister or totally my neighbor, and that. then you expect me? Uh, uh, first degree murder, you, you think I'm not... No, Just sit I'm in not a cell for the rest of your life. I, no, I not, totally understand not, you, uh, but okay. it's about to like what degree you start to make decisions over convicts' lives, yeah, I guess. Well, the, yeah. the professional people will ensure that because they're depending on the person's ability. Right. You know, okay. if, uh, if uh, you're an engineer um, or you're a constructor, we need no more prisons. We need hospitals, okay. clinics. Uh, so that's where you're gonna work. Okay. If uh, you're the kind of guy that is gonna work in our farms uh, to give us uh, food, uh, for you're life. gonna work. If you're, you, you do, they you, get retirement. What, the, what retirement? Like if you're for life and then you hit sixty-five, can you stop working? If you uh, you you won't get out of jail until uh, the day God decides to separate your body and soul. Okay. Uh, because you kill someone yes. inno- innocent. So why? I'm not society? contesting that, but like for life is usually twenty years. No, 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 no. You There's no parole. There's no parole. So you just make it for life until they die. It, it, okay. See, under action, I say there's no parole. Okay. If you are saving 15 years, you are going to save 15 years. Oh, I understand. Okay. If you are saving 25 years, you're going to save 25. Years. There's not going to be parole. Okay. There will be parole for certain uh, soft crimes. Soft, yeah. I and and uh, we must build separate uh, uh, correctional services to deal uh, with uh, petty crimes not to mix with hardened criminals. Okay. Hardened criminals, they must be in their own prisons, okay. uh, the way they, they work uh, to pay back. Uh, to, to What they've uh, done to, wrong. Uh, what they've done. Okay. And then, one of the things, as section I say, we've taken a policy on, is that we take the right to vote. We, we cannot accept someone who's harmed society, mad at the people. They don't get destroyed. to vote. Why must uh, our lives... Honestly, we, we, we have to be a nation of fools mm. if we we're going to allow criminals to determine sure. who gets into government. Sure. Uh, so we take the right uh, to, to vote. Okay. Uh, because uh, they'll, uh, if someone is saving jail, jail term for murdering, raping... I hear you. <laughs> They, they, they have shouldn't no, contribute a voice. The, no ways. Okay. Uh, honestly, we, if we accept it as South Africa, mm. then you must know we're a nation of fools. Okay. <laughs> so how do you change policing on the streets to make it more effective? Because it's all well and good to say if they get found guilty, but you just said yourself, policing is inadequate and the court system is inadequate. How do we fix the policing on the streets and then the court system such that you get the convictions you're looking for? Well, uh, you've got to uh, train police uh, properly. We need to, as a matter of agency, open proper police training colleges, not the Panyaza the training that happens at three years on a soccer field. Mm. <laughs> and you think uh, you've trained And then people. they got beautiful cars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this, uh, yeah, the, yeah. The, the Panyaza type of uh, policing, that's not uh, okay. okay. policemen and women, but they need what? Minimum of three years of intense uh, t- uh, training, mm. including detective training, okay. and, uh, including working with international bodies uh, right. that can assist us to equip uh, certain units. We need um, uh, specialized units in terms of made mm. and robbery. I grew up in an environment where we had the Brixton made and robbery squad. Those guys, uh, when you had met someone, they were looking for you. They'll They'd find you. They'll, okay. they'll find you. Okay. So we, we, we need specialized units. Specialized units to deal with corruption. Specialized units to deal with the rape of victims. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, or uh, uh, Sexual perpe- assaults, perpetrators. Yes, of course, yeah. We need uh, to deal with med- uh, and drug dealers. We need to have special units. There's uh, drug cartels. We've got to clean them out of I our country. You, you know, okay. So that we can protect our youth, who we believe... Uh, they are victims and sure. we will protect them we make sure that we provide uh, 
drug rehab centers, mm-hmm. but at the same time, when they get out of those uh, 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 centers, they must find employment. That's uh-huh. why, you, you know, handling this matter is not just really... So you hit the dealers, not the users. You help yeah. the users hit the dealers. No, yeah, the, the users. Those are the ones who are they're victims. The users of yes, drugs. Yes, yes, yeah, Our yes, youth, yes, yes. Our youth are victims. But then you take out the dealers. The dealers. The I dealers, uh, we take them out and okay. we take them out uh, brutally. Okay. <laughs> we, we must never show any mercy because okay. this de- dealers... What does that mean? <laughs> brutally. Brutally. When, okay. when we catch you, uh-huh. uh, when we catch you, you go to prison. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We, we're going to really push to make sure that serious drug dealers, uh, they get a uh, minimum of 25 years. Okay. The, the commission of the police cannot be appointed by the president. Let's uh, find a mechanism there where, you know, because we want these people to save the constitution and uh, save yeah. the people of, of this country. They must be able to prosecute without any fear or favor. Right now, why the system is not working? everything has to really be signed by the president. We've given the president too much power. Look at right now the, the, the kind of crime that our president is, is facing. And he's the one who determines whether he, can, uh, he must be charged or not. Sure. So if you, might, you can imagine if we, we, were, uh, we had an independent criminal justice system, probably by now the president mm. of the, the current president of the country and the one before him they would really be saving okay. many years in jail okay not to being the president of the country okay of so the president of a civilized nation so zuma would actually be in jail as and, opposed and president to president would, would, would both be in jail they would both be in jail by now so how do we solve the worst unemployment ki- uh, crisis in the world well like, uh, as an action SA government what are the first things that you do you to, to immediately reform uh, uh, labor legislation so that uh, if Dan wants to really open a factory or open a business, Dan uh, must be able to uh, get into a contract, whoever wants to work for Dan. How much they pay one another, it's got absolutely nothing to do with us as government. So minimum wage? You, you, you know, not, uh, I think for me, minimum wage, it's, uh, it's... Tell me, what is the minimum wage? Let's take it in a South African context sure. where you've got 12 million South Africans unemployed. Why would what, you what, what is the minimum wage to them? Well, nothing. Nothing. Okay. And minimum wage, actually, if you look at it uh, all over the world, it uh, protects skilled people because no businessman in the world will ever employ uh, Dan or James uh, if um, the law says I must pay you 4,000 rents, but you cost you, you cost me 6,000 rents. I understand. I'm, I'm not going to, uh, I mean... If your cost is more than what I'm paying you, I'm not going to pay. I'm not going to employ you. I, sure. I, I don't need government to really tell me. So I think uh, minimum wage, unfortunately, in, 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 in an environment where government deliberately disempowered people, gave them the most inferior education in the world. I think uh, I'm sure you're aware. Of course. Our education outcomes are, are the worst in, in the world unskilled uh, people, you are discriminating them, pitting them against each other on the basis of race. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, there's just no way you can have a, uh, have a prosperous economy. I understand. Uh, uh, and what other economy. kind of like budgetary choices uh, would an action SA, SA government make? Are there, I mean, if you're thinking about free markets, would you still fund state-owned enterprises, SABC, ESCOM, Transnet? SA, uh, uh, SAA ways I'll, I'll actually pay someone to take it off uh, of, uh, of, of the government's uh, Okay, balance fully sheet. private, get it out of my room. <laughs> get it. The only thing, uh, please keep the SAA brand, okay. SAA ways brand. Sure. But I'll pay you, so get it, get it off uh, our, our balance sheet. Uh, Transnet, I think uh, if you look at the need for transport uh, system in this country for the next 30, 50 years, I think government has got a role to play. Okay. Without, without any doubt. So we've what got other SOEs are we saying? We've got to f- subsidize public transport systems so that sure. our people must be able to really uh, to, to move, move around. ESCOM must compete on, on a commercial basis. Okay. Um, government uh, owned or privatized? All government owned. Okay. Uh, okay. Government owned. But... Com- allow the private sector to compete with them okay. on a commercial basis. If ESCOM cannot compete, let it die a natural okay. death and allow the private sector. But I think if you, if you look at uh, on a short-term basis where you need to provide electricity to some of the poor communities, 
private sector might not really be able to really c come out with a solution mm. with immediate effect. So, so that's you why you allow the private sector to play the role uh, to ensure that uh, ESCOM uh, also operates on, on a commercial basis. But it must be run by professional people, not sure. by cadres. Sure where we've committed as Section SA that our cabinet will be a maximum of 20. That's the okay. worst case scenario. <laughs> the yeah, worst case. That's the worst case scenario. <laughs> have, as bad as it gets. Yeah. It's, <laughs> if the worst case scenario will be 20 okay. cabinet ministers with not a single... Uh, with not a single deputy. deputy. Okay. We don't see what what do the, the deputies do. I mean, that mm. they're just really a, a, a liability. And are you looking at a technocratic model where you hire um, external uh, experts into even ministry positions, or because you just said you were anti cater deployment, but I'm sure there must be some political appointments that you'd make from within Action SA. If you if you look at our constitution, it does allow the president of the country to do um, uh, what they recruitment, like. yes. uh, recruitment, you know, okay. targeted recruitment. We want uh, uh, some of the top people in our cabinet so that they can play a role. I, w I want to really ensure that uh, I have one of the best uh, okay. financial person as a minister of finance. I yes. need... Uh, CEO of so Uber for Minister of Transport. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I need uh, to... to <laughs> The minister of police. It must be someone who 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 actually comes uh, from uh, from starting sure. from uh, the police training college. Who knows how to arrest a petty criminal up to the heart? You know. I understand. Real professional uh, okay. policeman. Uh, someone who must run our infrastructure programs uh, must be a, an engineer and so I forth. Hear you. Teachers. We, it has to be someone coming from the education mm. background, so so that we avoid uh, having a situation mm. where we, you end up uh, with people who can play guitars and uh, know how to dance. Yes, Th those people don't, don't belong uh, to uh, to government. Well, Minister of Arts and Culture, so long as they don't buy a twenty million rand flag. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the issue with Herman Mashaba. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments what you thought of his answers and even my questions and what else you'd like to know from him. And please, again, if you could just quickly like, subscribe and comment on our video and our channel and go listen to our podcast on Spotify. That would be a treat because serious big names are taking this show seriously and the more support we can show them that we have from all of us together, the bigger the name we can get. See you next week. This is The Issue with Dan Corder, brand new episode in seven days. Have a good one.